The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He's mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty, is mighty. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Let's give it another try while we wait for others to come. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, he's mighty. He's mighty. Oh, hallelujah. He is the mighty one. Welcome to the reading of the word on this beautiful brand new day, June 29. We're almost finished with the month. Wow, where did it go so fast? That's time, isn't it? Fast, usually. Slow when you're upset about something, but fast when you're having a good time. Well, let me tell you, that is such a revelation to me that he will save, but he will rejoice over thee with joy. Do you know that God rejoices over you with joy? <clears throat> yes, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord will sing over you. <clears throat> so isn't it wonderful to know that the word of God actually states that. So today we are continuing on with Beit Melechim, 2 Kings. We are up to chapter 15 today, chapter 15. So let's be right about it. I'm going to have myself one sip and then here we go. <clears throat> Beit Lamechem, 2 Kings chapter 15, and on into chapter 16. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, became king. He was 16 years old when he became king. Imagine that. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. And, you know, I just want to remind myself and all of you, this is a, maybe the most interesting to keep reading about king after king after king, but let's really be impressed with the fact that the people turned down God as their king and demanded, wanted a man. And so they're getting men one after another, right? Here he was. He became king when he was 16, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Yecholiah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father, Athaziah, had done, except... They keep shying away from completing it, don't they? That the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And perhaps this is why. King after king after king, they still went and did this. And then the Lord struck the king so that he was a leper until the day of his death. So he dwelt in an isolated house, and Yatham, the king's son, was over the royal house, judging the people of the land. 
Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah rested with his fathers, and they burned, buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And then Yotham, his son, reigned in his place. In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned over Israel in Samaria. Six months. That's all he lasted, six months. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And then Shalom, the son of Yabesh, conspired against him and struck and killed him in front of the people. And he reigned in his place. <clears throat> now the rest of the acts of Zechariah, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Yehu, saying, Your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it was. Shalom, the son of Yabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gadi, went up from Tirsa, came to Samaria, and struck Shalom, the son of Yabesh, in Samaria and killed him. And he reigned in his place. Lots of evil at the top, right? Envy, willing to kill, to take over. Now the rest of the acts of Shalom and the conspiracy which he led, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And then from Tirzah, Menahem attacked Tipsah, all who were there and its territory, because they did not surrender, therefore he attacked it. All the women there who were with child, he ripped open. This was a very evil, fierce man. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menahem, the son of Gadi, became king over Israel and reigned 10 years in Samaria. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Paul, king of Assyria, came against the land and Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver that his hand might be with him to strengthen the kingdom under his control. And Menahem exacted the money from Israel, from all the very wealthy, from each man 50 shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and did not stay there in the land. Now the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Menahem rested with his fathers. And then Pekahiah, his son, reigned in his place. In the 50th year of Esariah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. <clears throat> he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And then Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, an officer of his, conspired against him and killed him in Samaria, in the citadel of the king's house, along with Argob 
and Ariah, and with him were 50 men of Gilead. He killed him and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, indeed, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the 52nd year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, became king over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 20 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Naboth, who had made Israel sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath, Peleser, king of Assyria, came and took Aijan, Abel, Bet Macha, Yanoa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Nephtali, and he carried them captive to Assyria. And then Hoshea, the son of Elah, led a conspiracy against Pekah the son of Ramalia, and struck and killed him. So he reigned in his place in the 20th year of Yatham, the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, indeed, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, Yatham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Ah, hallelujah. Boker Tov, Scott, nice to have you join us. Hallelujah. In Hebrew are called Bamot, pronounced Bamot. Wonderful. I love it when you school me <clears throat> in pronunciations. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> and he did what was right, praise God, in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. However, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Yatham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Rason, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, against Judah. Here we go again. So Jotham rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And then Ahaz, his son, reigned in his place. And we move right along. <clears throat> to chapter 16. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, Ahaz, the son of Yatham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord his God as his father David had done. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire. According to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. <clears throat> now they've sinned right back down to the enemies. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. And then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, 
came up to Yerushalayim to make war. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezan, king of Syria, captured Elat for Syria and drove the men of Judah from Elat. And then the Edomites went to Elat and dwell there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to tiglath pileser king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Syria and from the hand of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and the gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria heeded him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Kir, and killed Rezin. Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet tiglath pileser king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest the design of the altar and its pattern, according to all its workmanship. Was this a good thing, Scott? And then Uriah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it before King Ahaz came back from Damascus. And when the king came back from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and made offerings on it. So he burnt his burnt offering and his grain offering, and he poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. He also brought the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. Then King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, on the great new altar, burn the morning burnt offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt sacrifice, and his grain offering. The king's burnt sacrifice and his grain offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their grain offering and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice and the bronze altar shall be for me. Here we go. Sinking pretty low, aren't we? Shall be for me to inquire by. So the priests obeyed the king against the Lord. And King Ahaz cut off the panels of the carts and removed the lavers from them. And he took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it and put it on a pavement of stones. Also, he removed the Sabbath pavilion, which they had built in the temple, and he removed the king's outer entrance from the house of the Lord on account of of the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Ahaz rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And then Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his place. And we stop right there for this day. And we will continue on tomorrow morning, Lord willing, that I'm here, you're here. We trust the Lord, don't we, with each day. 
We move right along now to the wonderful book of Acts, and we are in chapter 19. We will pick up with verse 13. Oh, good, Scott, you are just really, woo, you are giving us all kinds of stuff. Wonderful. I can't wait to read it. Acts 19, picking up with verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, Yeshua I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling on Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, <clears throat> many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Oh, that's the books they were reading. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way, and way is capitalized. That's what they began to call these Christians, the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation. And he said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger, of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's traveling companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. And then some of the officials of Asia who were his friends, sent to him, pleading 
that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Talk about confusion. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Two hours. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Excuse me? The image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called into question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Wow. <clears throat> we move right along now to Tehillim 147, Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. Gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. The Lord is building, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. Lem. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Imagine that. Look up into a clear sky one night when there's just countless stars. And I often think he calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens that cry. He does not delight in the strength of a horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. 
He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders and fills you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He casts out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Wow, what a powerful psalm. We wrap up today's reading <clears throat> with Mishlei chapter 18, verses 4 and 5. Proverbs, Proverbs 18, verses 4 and 5. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. A wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Wow, let's reread that last sentence. That's powerful. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. We can all say amen to that one, can't we? Well, praise God. Thank you for coming. Let's close up today's reading with prayer. Precious Father God, we are so grateful for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can have it in our hands freely. Thank you that we can read, we can study, we can look up things. <clears throat> uh, we just thank you, Lord, for this brother Scott who has come, who has studied greatly the word of God and for his sharing. I'd ask, Lord, for a special blessing today upon Scott and his lovely wife, Jane. Precious Lord, bless them. Take them to many places to share your word with people who are hungry to hear more. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for her peace today. Oh, precious, precious Lord, please, let peace rule and reign in Jerusalem, in Israel. Let it roll up and down the streets and in and out of the homes and, and let it come into the hearts of the people. Precious Lord, you are bringing your people home and we are so excited to see it. Please, Lord, let all those who have an opportunity to come, Lord, give them strength, Give them courage to just say yes, even if they don't know what is going to happen, where they'll be or what they'll do. Father God, help them not to miss any opportunity to come back to the land, to the heritage that you've given them. This is a great in-gathering time, and it's so exciting to see. Precious Lord, I'd ask that you would bless Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the Knesset. Father God, cause them to do what you would have them to do. Cause them to honor you and to love the land and love their people. Cause them, Lord, to not just argue, but to find answers. And we will thank you for it is your right hand over them that causes these things. 
Father God, I hold up America to you and you are exposing evil and we are excited about it. <clears throat> Precious Lord, we cry out and we pray for righteousness to reign once again in America more than ever, even when it looks like it's impossible. Lord, all things are possible with you. So we pray for good things. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would take evil people out of offices. People who are not working in love with you or for you or according to your word, but against everything that is righteous. Precious God, we'd ask that you would remove them and that you would reveal unto us who to vote for when that time comes. Lord, let many good things happen this time in the coming election. Many good things. We'd ask, Lord, that righteous people would volunteer to work the polls. That righteous, honest people who are brave to speak up and confront anything that they see is not right. That they would come and offer. That they would yield to your encouragement to run for an office. Precious God, we pray for righteous people to run and to come into these offices and to bring a great change. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we have two ladies praying for a car and we are joining them. Yo, Linda and Linda both are praying that you would make it possible for them to have a car. And Lord, we're asking that you do that too. Praise your wonderful name. Lord, I'm asking that you hear all of the prayer requests of the people who have come, the people who will come later that they will get down to business with prayer with you, that they would open up your word and that they would read out loud with their own voices so that their ears hear, so that faith can come by hearing and hearing by your word. We give you praise for that, Lord. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about serving the Lord today. Love you all so much. Thanks for coming, Scott. God bless each and one of you, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye.